went through a tape reader. The person on the other end manually took down the message and the rest of the transfer goes on from there. This was, you can imagine, a far from a foolproof system. It was hampered by low speed and security concerns. Senders had to describe every transaction in detailed sentences, which were then interpreted and executed by someone else. It was the perfect storm for human error. Then in 1973, the SWIFT system was created. It stands for the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications. It's a messaging system that links more than 11,000 financial institutions in over 200 countries and territories. And it's the reason why transferring money overseas is so easy these days. The difference between SWIFT and Telex is in the technology. SWIFT uses unique codes that are sent from bank to bank. Let me show you how this works. All right, let's say you're a, a Chase Bank customer in New York and you need to send money to a friend who banks at Banque Populaire in France. All you have to do is walk into your local Chase Bank with your friend's account number and SWIFT code of the Paris branch. Increasingly, you can do this, by the way, on the bank's website or app. The message is sent. The bank will credit the money to your friend's bank account in France, and it's done. Now, keep in mind, SWIFT is only a messaging system. It doesn't hold any funds or securities, but without SWIFT, there's virtually no other way to alert banks when transactions are going to occur from country to country. For a term most of us don't use, I cannot overstate how important SWIFT is for countries and businesses that buy and sell goods or services. Very few countries are not on the SWIFT system, and the ones that aren't are isolated and poor. Without another system in place, and there are virtually no other systems like it in place, it would mean economic calamity for a country to be removed from SWIFT. There'd be no effective means for trade outside of its borders. Now, some people think that it's time for Russia to be entirely removed from SWIFT. The U.S., European allies, and Canada did agree this weekend to remove some key Russian banks from the SWIFT system. Kicking Russia out of the SWIFT system would be the harshest financial punishment against Russia, short of an actual physical embargo and an unprecedented move against one of the world's largest economies. It would damage Moscow's economy immediately and in the long run. So why not do it? Well, there are a few arguments. It would really hurt Russia, but it would hurt other economies too, including some European countries that depend on Russian oil and gas. Also, if Russia can't receive foreign currency for selling things, being off the SWIFT system means it also can't send currency to buy things from other countries. The U.S. and Germany stand to lose the most because their banks use SWIFT to communicate with Russian banks more than any other countries. And the last time the West dangled this option, during the invasion of Crimea in 2014, Putin said it would be equivalent to a declaration of war. Alienating Russia from SWIFT is considered a nuclear option, one that is being considered because there's no turning back after pressing that button. The explosion would destroy Russia's economy, something that some see as a just punishment for invading the same sovereign country twice in eight years. But the economic mushroom cloud would contaminate nations around the globe.